In December of 2022, I said that it had been the year of the handheld, but I was wrong, because actually 2023 was the year of the handheld, or at least the year of the included carrying case. But now it's time to look ahead to the best upcoming handhelds of 2024. There are some wild cards on this list that you don't want to miss, so stick around. And we're going to get right into it with, of course, the Retroid Pocket 4 and the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. These technically launched in December 2023, but they're not going to be shipping until mid-January 2024, and some reviewers have already got their hands on one. Ahem, <clears throat> not this one. The base model Retroid Pocket 4 comes with a Dimensity 900 chip. That's the same one that was included in the original AYN Odin Lite. With this chip, you should be able to get some pretty fantastic performance for PlayStation 2 and GameCube, and it retails at $149 US before shipping in taxes. And then there's the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, which comes with the Dimensity 1100 chip, and promises a little bit more power than the base model. With these two handhelds, we're really looking at the start of sub-200 PS2 and GameCube gameplay, and I couldn't be more excited for that. I have a feeling that the Retroid Pocket 4 and 4 Pro are going to be one of the most popular handhelds of the year, and I absolutely wouldn't be surprised if they were still selling at hotcakes by the end of 2024. And by the way, the Pro model of the Retroid Pocket 4 retails for $199 US dollars. It also has the same great analog sticks that were included in the 2S and the AYN Odin 2. So really, there's a lot to love here, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on my Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. And I also want to mention the Retroid Pocket 4 Flip. Of course, this hasn't been announced, it might not exist, but I'll eat my hat if Retroid doesn't do one of these. Now let's shift gears a bit to look at something a little more unusual and that is the Orange Pie handheld. This was announced last year by Orange Pie, who are a manufacturer of single board computers, basically Raspberry Pi ripoffs, such as the Orange Pi Zero 3 that I have here. And the announcement of an Orange Pie handheld was surprising, but welcome, especially seeing as it should ship with the RK3588S CPU. This is something of an evolution of the 3566 that we've seen previously. And in fact, we should be able to see some pretty reliable PS2 and GameCube performance on this chip. There are some SBCs out already with it, and the results are really, really impressive. What remains to be seen is the price of the Orange Pi handheld. Initial rumors put it at around 215 US dollars, but really, it's all up in the air right now. Something I'm really looking forward to in the Orange Pi handheld is a 7-inch display. I'm really waiting for a more powerful Android handheld with a 7-inch display. And so this is one I'm probably going to pick up immediately. Another interesting point is that Orange Pie kind of leans into DIY electronics. So I wonder if there'll be any kind of customization or interesting things we can do with this handheld. Also, there's an x86 handheld coming too, apparently, with an AMD 6800U chip, which is the same one that you'll see in the AYN Loki Max. It remains to be seen whether this will actually happen or not, but there have been some prototype images leaked, which look pretty interesting in my opinion. And moving on from that, I want to talk a little bit more about the 3588, because the Orange Pi handheld isn't the only one coming with that chip. In fact, the Game Force Ace should be shipping basically any day now, save for any delays. And I'm sure that there are other handhelds with this chip in the pipeline. It remains to be seen whether this specific chip will reach the low prices that the 3566 did this year. But I sure hope so, and I look forward to seeing what comes from this chip. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a range of Android-based devices available that can do some pretty good PS2 and GameCube, so that's really exciting. Anyway, let's change gears here and talk about Miu. I don't think I've ever seen a company that has been so behind the curve that Miu has been in 2023. They've barely been able to keep up with orders for the Miu Mini Plus and the Miu Mini, and they've also been getting absolutely demolished by Anbrunic's RG35XX line. I mean, just in the last couple of months, Anbrunic released a more powerful version of their MiU Mini Plus competitor, and a horizontal version of the original 35XX as well. Meanwhile, MiU seems to be just completely dragging their heels. Anyway, I'm not dunking on MiU here, because I'm actually really looking forward to the MiU Mini Flip. There have been a lot of rumors and some pre-production photos, and some nerds have 3D printed MiU Mini Flip models. And this looks like it's going to sport a RK3566 chip. The same as, you know, like 90% of the handhelds released this year. That means it will be able to play some Dreamcast, PSP, and some N64 and Saturn 2. And it should be able to do all this while being around about the size of the Game Boy Advance SP, with a clamshell form factor and dual analog stick controls. 
I am super, super excited for this one, and I really, really hope that Miyu bring it to market. Based on everything I've seen and heard, this thing should be coming any time now, and I really hope that Miyu hurries up with it. And of course, I hope that they can keep up with the demand when they finally do release it, because this one is going to fly off the shelves, figuratively speaking. And of course, there should be some other Miyu devices coming too. The long-awaited 282, or the horizontal version of the Miyu Mini, and the seemingly dead-in-the-water Miyu P60 still hasn't materialized. The P60 was supposed to be based on the Helio chipset of the same name, but other than a few videos and the constant assurance that it's still coming, there's been absolutely nothing from Miyu. I'm really not sure where this device would fit in the market unless it's really, really cheap. And with that chipset, we should see some PS2 and GameCube at the very least, but again, it all comes down to price and whether Miyu can actually get it out of the door. But whatever, I'm just looking forward to the flip, which is more or less guaranteed to come out, and hopefully within the next month or two. My only misgiving about the flip is I kind of wish it was on the weaker side like the original Miyu Mini and Miyu Mini Plus, and I also wish it would be directly compatible with Onion OS. But if it comes out with the RK3566 chip, that's kind of doubtful to be honest. So we'll see. And now let's move on to a different company who definitely isn't the same company as Miyu with TrimUI. I know, I know, I've dunked on TrimUI a little bit recently, but I'm still really, really looking forward to the TrimUI brick, which will no doubt be a direct competitor to the RG35XX and the Miyu Mini Plus. And if it brings that sturdy feeling of TrimUI devices along with the recognizably clicky controls, I'm all in for it. And I'm really, really looking forward to it, actually. Hopefully, it will be priced competitively, too. My only real misgiving is that the RG35XX Plus has kind of changed this price point in the market, so it remains to be seen how expensive the TrimUI Smart Brick will be, and which exact devices it will compete with. Anyway, moving on again, how many days are left in 2024? Because that's probably how many INEO devices we can expect to release this year. But in general, that brings me on to x86 PC handhelds. It kind of feels like after the Steam Deck was released, many, many different companies hit the gas in trying to release an x86-based handheld. And of course, we've had a couple of mainstream entries, such as the ROG Ally and the Lenovo Legion Go. And starting off 2024, it looks like MSI is going to be entering the field with the MSI Claw. And in general, I would expect to see that in 2024, we're going to see some more well-thought-out, interesting entries into this market. Because now that a bunch of companies have managed to shove their devices out of the door quick, they've hopefully learned a little bit more about this type of handheld, and have had time behind the scenes to do a little bit more innovation and R&D. At least I hope so. And so I would expect to see many, many more x86 handhelds being announced and releasing this year. And that brings me on to my next entry in the list, which is a new AYN handheld. Because AYN are not going to sit back on their heels now that the Odin 2 and Loki have been released. Of course, the original Loki was a pretty cool product, but it definitely had some issues. And it was definitely a first revision type of product. And, you know, it probably almost bankrupted the company too. But with that almost entirely out of the way, and the Odin 2 releasing quickly into critical acclaim, I think AYN are going to be entering the handheld market again sooner than we think. Usually, AYN's campaigns release toward the end of the year. And so I would expect that this year we'll see another Loki revision. It might not be called the Loki 2 or anything, but I would expect to see another x86 handheld from this company this year. And I really hope that they get it right, with a timely release and everything that made the Loki and the Odin 2 great. And honestly, the only thing that I think that AYN really need to do at this point is to ditch the 6-inch screen. Because even though I love my Loki Max and I play it a lot, and I use it a lot, the tiny 6-inch screen just isn't really it anymore for me. I'm really looking for something with a bigger display. And that's especially with these gigantic bezels on the Loki. It's kind of just, I don't know how to describe it. I love this handheld, but it kind of feels almost embarrassing to see this tiny screen on such a great handheld. So my wish for the Loki 2 or the next x86 handheld from this company will of course be a 7 inch or bigger display with the exact same controls as the Loki. That will blow me away and I'm really, really hoping they do it. Of course, this is all entirely me speculating, and they might just never do this again. However, I would be pretty surprised if they do a follow-up to the Odin 2 this year so soon. I love the Odin 2, and of course I'll be doing a review on it soon. But I can't help but think that this here is kind of maxed out on Android devices right now. It's insanely powerful and held back only by what is available on Android right now. 
in even the areas that aren't perfect, such as switch emulation that's slow and glitchy sometimes, is more because the software can't keep up with the hardware yet. And once efficiencies come to these new emulators and games, I think the Odin 2 will be able to handle most of it perfectly. And honestly, other than a few bits and pieces here and there, for example a higher refresh rate screen, I think the Odin 2 has kind of maxed out this market, probably for a couple of years to come. So we'll see, maybe AYN will do something really out of the box, or maybe they'll just do another Loki. I'm kind of hoping for the latter personally, and I definitely wish them better luck than they had last time. But AYN have shown time and time again they know how to build excellent handhelds. I just really hope they do it right with the Loki 2 if that's where they want to go. And I really hope they don't freaking lie about their Linux support like they did last time. You know, when they promised that Loki Control Center was built from the ground up to work on Linux, and that they were partnering with Valve to bring Steam OS on day one, neither of which were true and both of which were totally lies. Okay, I'm gonna digress and not get into that now, but I'll do a Loki video soon and I'll get really into the weeds with it. However, the device I'm most excited about in this area right now is the One X Player X1. This is kind of a little bit different, it's not necessarily only a gaming handheld. It's more like an x86 tablet, laptop, handheld combo. And it's powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H chip, and it comes with magnetically attachable controllers that go on either side of the tablet. Now honestly, when the PlayStation Portal was announced, I kinda laughed, I thought it looked ridiculous. But ever since I've done my Games for a G8 Galileo mod, and I've been using it with an 8 inch tablet inside, I have to say that I am all in on this form factor at this point. It may look kinda silly and it may not be the most portable solution in the world, but I think this is one of the most comfortable and enjoyable ways to play games on a handheld with a big screen. And I honestly couldn't be more excited. I'm gonna try as hard as I can to pick one of these up, but given 1x player's price points, I may not be able to. But here's hoping. So now it's time to look at the final handheld on my list that I think we need to be looking out for in 2024. And it's kind of a bit more mainstream than you might expect, and that is the Nintendo Switch 2. I feel like I've eaten my hat like 10 times thinking that Nintendo was going to announce the Switch 2 and they never did, but it remains to be seen just how long they're going to stick with the original Switch. I will be incredibly surprised if the Switch 2 doesn't get announced, if not released this year. And personally, I'm hoping for more of a revision than a brand new hardware innovation, and I would much rather see a more powerful version of the same thing with full backwards compatibility than I would to see a brand new console that does something completely crazy and new. And I kind of feel like that's the general consensus around this online. I feel like a lot of people just want the Switch but more powerful. And with every day and every handheld that releases it feels like it's falling further and further behind. Although it is absolutely amazing just how much good software aka games can keep such an old and outdated device relevant. Really amazing actually. But yeah, Switch 2, it, it has to be coming this year, right? It has to be. There's no way they can't release the Switch 2 this year. Let me know what you think about that in the comment box below. And incidentally, let me know what you think of all of this list in the comment box below. Is there a handheld that you're really, really looking forward to that I didn't mention? Or is some underdog company going to come up and do something crazy? I'm really looking forward to this year and I think it's going to be another insane year for handhelds. So please, if you're not subscribed to RetroBreeze, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can keep up on all the new handhelds that release. I have tons and tons of reviews in the pipeline, like too many right now, and this year one of my goals is to review things a lot faster. I'll always keep my promise to never review a handheld on the day that I receive it, and to always give it at least a couple of weeks so I can get really really into the weeds and give you details on it that you might not get elsewhere. But other than that, I'm really hoping to be faster, more efficient, and to give you more up-to-date information. And to be honest, I don't think I'm going to have a choice, because I think this year is just going to be a total flood of handhelds. We're getting more and more into the mainstream. We're still not quite there yet, but there's more and more people getting into this hobby and loving this type of handheld, and I'm definitely looking forward to bringing you engaging and interesting content on as many of them as I possibly can. And that's this one done. Thank you very much for watching RetroBreeze, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.